In chapter two, um, we're going to be working with some basic geometry concepts and actually lesson 2.1 deals with a lot of vocabulary. Um, and I'm sure all this seems familiar to you, but um, these are the terms that we're going to be um, using throughout chapter two. Now the first term was angle and an angle such as this one up here at the top left hand corner angle ABC we can name it that or we could call it angle CBA or we could just call it angle B but the key here is that B is the vertex so it's got to appear in the middle of the name if we use three letters we also identify angles by measure and um, a right angle is designated only when you have this little corner drawn um, here at the intersection. Straight angle is the measure of a straight line, so that's 180 degrees. An acute angle is less than 90, whereas an obtuse angle is greater than 90. Um, we also look at lines that are parallel and perpendicular. And um, for this pair, um, top left hand corner, we have two lines here intersecting to form a right angle. Well, we say they are perpendicular to each other. So that's our two perpendicular lines. The symbol looks like this, kind of like an upside down capital T. That indicates perpendicular. Parallel lines are the two slanted lines that are, are listed here um, in the notation. L is parallel to M. And the way we know that they're parallel, not just guessing if they're parallel or not, is because they have arrowheads drawn on the lines. That's our indicator that these are parallel lines. Now here we have a third line that goes through those two parallel lines, and that's line T for transversal. That's just another name for a line that intersects two other lines. Not necessarily parallel, but intersects two other lines in two distinct points. We have the definition for supplementary and complementary. Supplementary angles are two angles whose sum equals 180 degrees, whereas complementary angles are two angles whose sum equals 90 degrees. And one way to kind of keep this straight is C comes before S in the alphabet. So 90 um, comes before 180. Whatever helps you keep them straight. <laughs> the supplementary is 180 for the sum of the two, and complementary, the sum of the two angles, is 90. Adjacent angles are two angles that share a side. So here we've got this ray in the middle of this drawing. So angle 1 and angle 2 are referred to as adjacent angles. And in this diagram, angles are vertical when two lines intersect and the angles that are opposite each other. So in this case, angle 3 and 4 are vertical angles. Now the nice thing about vertical angles is that they're always equal. So if we know the measure of angle 3, then automatically we know the measure of angle 4. Now going back to our parallel lines, we have um, other terms that we need to be familiar with, such as corresponding, alternate interior, and alternate exterior angles. So let's look at this one at a time. Corresponding angles are two angles that are in the same relative position. So these two lines are parallel, P and Q. Notice the little arrowheads on the line, so that's telling me they're parallel. So that means angle 2 is, is corresponding angle 4. It's the same relative position. Also corresponding would be 1 and 3, 5 and 7. 6 and 8. They're in the same relative position. Alternate interior angles means that they're inside or interior of the parallel lines. So think of looking at in between the two parallel lines. So you only have four angles there to consider. The 2, 6, 3, and 7. They're, they're between the parallel lines. And if they're on alternate sides of the transversal. So 3 and 6 or alternate interior, so are 2 and 7. Those are alternate interior. Alternate exterior is 
angles on the outside of those two parallel lines. So that would have been the 1 and 5 and 4 and 8, but alternate means they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So 1 and 8 are opposite, opposite mm, excuse me, are alternate exterior angles, and 5 and 4 are alternate exterior angles. Now the nice thing about that is if I'm given a couple of parallel lines with some angles marked, and all I know is one measure. I only know um, that angle one is 105 degrees. Um, let's see if I can get this to work. So angle one is 105 degrees. So that's this angle. So I'm, I'm going to look at that angle in reference to the other angles. Now, I know that one and four are vertical, so they have to be equal. And I also know it takes 1 and 2 together to make a straight line, so that has a sum of 180 degrees. So I can quickly find angles around this point of intersection. So that means I know that angle 4 is 105, and angle 2 and angle 3, they're equal. And I'm going to take 105 and subtract it from 180, so those two measures are 75 degrees. So now as I go back and look at my diagram, um, 1 is in the same relative position as 5. So we say those two are corresponding angles. So whatever the measure of angle 1 is, angle 5 has got to be the same. So angle 5 is 105 degrees, and it's vertical angle. 8 here has got to be 105 degrees, right? They're opposite each other. But 1 and 8 are also alternate exterior, so they have to be equal. So here again, we've got some more measures that we know. We know angle... Um, 5 is 105 degrees, and we also know that angle 8 is 105 degrees. And then to finish this up, we can use some other facts, <clears throat> like back up here, um, this angle 3 that we were looking at, um, this angle is alternate interior with angle 6. So if they're alternate interior, they have to be equal. So 3 and 6 have to be 75 degrees. Those 3 is 75, so angle 6 is 75. Now you can do it that way, or you can just look at the fact that 5 and 6 together form a straight line. So if 5 is 105, then 6 has got to be 75. And then 6 and 7 are vertical angles, so those two have to be equal. So now we have the measure of all the angles in that diagram. And then the last part of this particular lesson deals with corresponding segments. Now here again, these are um, corresponding segments of involving parallel lines and transversals. So if you'll notice in the diagram, they've over here on the right hand side, they've got A is to B as C is to D. You could have written A is to C as B is to D, and that would be correct too. But they give you a problem here to work out. So we're going to take a moment and um, fill this in. So in this problem, we know that A is 3.2, and we're going to compare that to B, which is 3.0. So all I'm doing is replacing that little formula up there. And then C is 4.0, and D is our unknown. And then the rest of this is just a matter of solving for D. So our first step when we've got a ratio equal to a ratio is to cross multiply. 
So when we do that, we get 3.2D equals, and multiplying 3.0 times 4.0 is 12.0. Then our next step would be to divide both sides by this 3.2, because it's 3.2 times D. So we're just doing a little bit of algebra here. And then that way, the, those two will cancel. And then our final answer will be D equals and 12.0 divided by 3.2 is 3.75.